Hi everyone, I'm Nicola Daskalakis. I'm the CEO and designer of Brides and Hairpins Los Angeles. We're a woman-run business and we started in 2013. Brides and Hairpins specializes in headpieces, earrings, veils, and bridal sashes. We love our brides. We love weddings. We nurture our relationships with our vendors and we love our wonderful retailers. We also like to focus on merging bridal and fashion as one. And the way we actually do this is we connect with our dream customer through these incredible platforms of social media. So we get to know her lifestyle, who she is as a person, what she likes and doesn't like. And that way we get to design the pieces that she loves and that she wants to wear, pieces that are fun and of course wearable. So I wasn't always a jewelry designer. I actually got my degree in business and I ended up getting a corporate banking job. And the reason I got this job was because it entailed a lot of travel. So I got to work and live in London. I got to travel Europe. I then ended up working and living in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. And it wasn't until I got back that I realized I was so unfulfilled staring at spreadsheets and four gray walls. I actually grew up in South Africa. And when I was nine years old, I used to draw and I would paint and every weekend I worked at flea markets selling my paintings and all my drawings. I loved to be creative and I enjoyed being quiet and being involved in my paintings. And so while I was in corporate banking, I put myself through beauty school. I got my cosmetology license and I also got certified as a makeup artist in Hollywood. The irony was, I didn't even know what an eye pencil was or concealer. I worked super hard, and after that, the business skyrocketed. I was able to work on red carpet, celebrities. I was able to grow a team of 10 girls who were hairstylists and makeup artists. It was so much fun. And what I ended up doing was, um, I became one of the most preeminent makeup artists and hairstylists in Los Angeles. So I was constantly booked out. I would be booked out a year and a half in advance. And that really, um, the passion I felt for doing hair and makeup led me to become a jewelry designer. And I started in 2013. There are four. I would say there are five areas of inspiration that we go with. One is wedding blogs. We follow our wedding blogs from West Coast to East Coast, as well as our international wedding blogs. People are just, it's amazing, you see different types of inspiration from Australia, South Africa, the UK, Southeast Asia. So we take all our inspiration from these wedding blogs and what's happening there. And number two is similar to wedding blogs, but wedding magazines. Again, local magazines as well as international. And we tear out pages and we collect them throughout the year. Number three is an obvious one, and that is social media. And I would say we follow a lot of, of hairstylists, we're seeing what's happening in hair and runway. Number four is quite special for me, really. It's um, my cultural heritage. So I am super lucky that hopefully um, I get to go to Greece every year, every summer. So I really do that because my mom helps with my kids who are three and five. And so I get to have a free headspace where I do a lot of the bulk of the designs or the first draft of designs. And number five is just natural, creative spontaneity. So I have a notepad next to my bed or throughout the day where I would sketch ideas um, and first drafts of headpieces and veils. So taking all of this inspiration together, we also know as a company that each woman is unique. So, you know, it also depends on the time of year she gets married. Is it a summer wedding or a winter wedding? The, type of, the time of the day she's getting married, is it the morning or the evening? In the morning, she might want something a bit more subtle. In the evening, maybe something more elaborate. Could also be maybe some, her cultural background, her history, her religion. So we take all these aspects of who she is and we try and create a unique, unique collection every way possible. Okay, so we always start with hand drawing our, our, um, our collections and our pieces. Um, we used to have um, a team of designers. Now I've become a bit of a me monster and I like to design all the pieces. 
So along with, with a team of designers. So what we do is we hand draw pieces, that's our first draft. And we really, I'm so thankful that we have a woman run team. We all get together constantly and we do a lot of brainstorming. So we get two, three, maybe four opinions on each piece. And, and we really go from there. So we take our design aspects, our inspiration aspects, and then we throw it out in these meetings. Um, and that's really how we, we start the design process. And then we, from there we discuss, you know, what type of components are we going to use? Freshwater pearls, faux pearls, which is very on trend right now. Are we going to use Swarovski crystals or real opals? We talk about the different colors, whether it's rose gold or uh, silver or gold. And, you know, when, we, when it comes to actually making the pieces, we also discuss, you know, is it going to be hand wired or are we going to set it in a cast mold? And, um, and then we also talk about um, you know, creating, we might do one design in several styles, so maybe one design with opals, one design with pearls, and the same design with crystals, Swarovski crystals. And then the pieces are made with a sterling silver, and the golden rose gold is plated with 14 karat gold. So I don't know what I would do without the woman in my team, but equally, if not more important, I don't know what I would do without my family. My mom is involved, my two sisters, and my daughter's in training, and my husband. My husband actually does all the boring stuff in the business. So he does all the accounting and all the back office stuff, and he's actually brilliant. He comes to all our photo shoots, and he's really such a partner of mine in this business. So a wedding has many opportunity to spend a ton of money, right? You've got your wedding dress, the location, the food, the invitations and flowers, the list goes on. But I urge you, do not scrimp on your hair and makeup. Maybe pull different areas of your budget to really get the best hair and makeup artist that you can find and who you love to work with. So your headpiece, your veil, your earrings and your belt are really the accent that draws the attention to how beautiful you look. So when I worked as a makeup artist and hairstylist, you know, the bride starts getting ready, her hair and makeup is perfect, her dress, she puts her shoes on, and then literally as she's putting in her headpiece and veil, there's a beautiful silence in the room. It's literally a moment where she's like, okay, I look amazing. And so there definitely is a piece for everybody. And the irony is a lot of brides who are like, I'm not wearing a veil, so I would say about 80% to 90% of brides actually end up choosing a veil, even if it's very subtle. Our brides are very Instagram savvy. She knows how to make folders on Pinterest, where she gets ideas from. If she doesn't really know what she wants, she's willing to try. And what's most important is that our collections are very minimalist and subtle, and our brides know this. One of our best feedbacks that we've received from a lot of our pieces is that they're very wearable and lightweight and of course very flexible. Thank you so much for following along. If you're interested to hear more about our story or look further into our collection, head over to David's Bridal Blog. We are so honored that we can be one of the featured vendors here at David's Bridal.